Welcome to Glide Chat, where we give you the rundown of all things service now. Let's talk about the now, right now. Welcome to another episode of Glide Chat. My name is Michael Lombardo. With me is Kali Alexander, our account executive and customer advocate here oh, at GlideFast. Oh. That's right. Kali, you've had such an amazing ascension in the ServiceNow space. Um, I remember just seeing you on LinkedIn one day yep. out of nowhere, like you've been here for 10 years. And I'm like, who is this? And what is she doing? Because, you know, no one was doing LinkedIn Lives. Sure. Still, nobody in, in the ServiceNow space sure. is doing LinkedIn Lives. It was pumping as much content through LinkedIn, which I just think is genius, and I knew I had to have you. Man. <laughs> I had to have you at Glyfast. You, you're not going to believe this. I don't yeah. think I told you this before. Yeah. When I kind of was, like, making my way into the ServiceNow ecosystem, yeah. I took a look and sat quiet in the corner, in the cut for a little bit to mm-hmm. see, like, who was creating content how were people displaying what they knew? Yeah. And right away, I saw there were several ServiceNow YouTube channels, and then yeah. there was GlideFast that yeah. was also doing content. So I was like, okay, ServiceNow and GlideFast, they're the standard of what content creation looked like. So y'all were at the top of the mountain for me. Yeah. And I wow. was like, let me, when I come out, let me present myself in a way where these people at the mountaintop where I'm like aspiring to that. Right. Mm, yep. And so when you reached out to me, I was like, I was, I would have been happy like getting like somewhere down here. Right. Yeah, I would yeah. happy down here. Yeah. But when you reached out to me, I was like, yo, why <laughs> <laughs> fast so- Mike Lombardo reached out to me. Ugh. Like I, it was literally a pinch myself moment. I've had many consecutive hard years in my life, yeah. many consecutive hard yeah. years. And so the transition and the pivot of service now and getting the attention of people like you, other people in the ecosystem who I really look up to and admire, it has been like a shift in my life, and it's it's been an amazing journey so far. That's awesome. That's awesome to hear. And, you know, it was funny when you were saying that, you know, setting like a goal yeah. or this would be nice, you know, that's that's growth. I mean, that's the first step of growth. That's that's the first step of advance, of any sort of advancement, career advancement, Health of it, you gotta like, okay, here's here's the here's the elite yeah. people or thing or goal, and hey, if I end up here, it's pretty good, you know. Sure. That's set your goals high, and hey, you may not hit that bullseye, yeah. but getting close or anywhere, it's better, and you're advancing, you know, whatever ever your mission or your goals are. You know, it's interesting because it makes me think about. I love sports, as you know. Yeah, and Jackie Joyner Kersey outstanding track athlete. Mm. I remember she was being interviewed and they were asking her like, how do you, how do you do this? How do you keep coming back? You know, event after event, Olympic after Olympic. And she says something about, I always look (laughs) past the finish line. Right. And apparently that's something that a lot of track athletes do look beyond the finish line. But I think about like, what does that mean in our personal lives? Mm. How can we integrate that into our personal philosophy about how we kind of move through and navigate through career, through personal challenges and all of that. And yeah, so I appreciate you kind of adding that color to that. And it just kind of makes me think about there's that really sweet connection between what we do professionally and sports, which is yeah. probably why I love them oh, both, right? hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> I, you don't got to tell me. I know I'm, I'm very competitive and no kidding. And I love, I love this. Yeah. This thing we do here. You know, I, I feel so compelled to interview you because I'm used to always doing the interview. We'll, so we'll, do, we'll do both. We'll do, do both. That. Let's do both. I, I get, you know, well, yeah, I kind of I do have questions for you too, but, but yeah, we, this may be we may have to do like an hour long glide chat here. But, you know what's it's funny that yeah. you say that, and I yeah. and I kind of you know threw myself back and laughed just now yeah. because our very first phone call, we immediately just started talking, right? And then you were like, "Hey, yo, Kali, do you mind if I ask you some questions?" <laughs> <laughs> well, you were you. There's another good thing about you. You were very specific, and like you you did, you did your research. And for somebody who is new to the space, like you were asking pretty pointed and specific questions that would would gauge like what are your intentions as a partner? What you, what's your what's your roadmap? What's your goal? Are you are you in it for the long haul? You you know, you were <laughs> I was in the hot seat. 
Wow, I'm surprised that you even remember oh, that yeah, detail of, of the conversation. You'd be surprised. I remember, like, you have no idea. It's cr- like I can put myself back to like specific customer calls, meetings, interviews with with team members here. Like the first, I remember like the first time I spoke to people. I remember the first time I spoke to you. That wasn't even that long ago, but I was walking around in my home office, and I, I remember it like it was yesterday. Would you credit your ability to kind of remember like, you know, verse, scripture, places, names? as a, a key part of your success? I'm very visual. Mm. I'm a visual learner. Yeah. I'm very, you know, very visual. So, it, and I'm very emotional. Yeah. So, like, when I'm talking to you for the first time, it's a genuine, or, or any anytime. Like, I'm very invested in relationships. You know, I'm very passionate. Uh, like, when I give you my word, I mean it. Yeah. I try to remember, you know, when... When I'm talking to somebody, let's say, that wants to work at GlideFast, they have specific goals for them. And I, when I'm telling them about coming to GlideFast and we're talking about that, I'm, like, committing to f- helping them fulfill those goals. So it's very important that I remember <laughs> what sure. the promises I'm making. Same thing with customers. They have specific goals that they're trying to leverage ServiceNow for, And we are sitting here saying we're the partner to help you do that. And it's important to me to, to, to live up to those. And that that's always been my standard. And I think that's part of the reason why Glidefast has been successful. Well, it's, it's really refreshing to hear that you see that on all the various positions of the table, right? So you see it on the customer side, you see it on the employee side, service now, service now side. So, I'm here, and you know I'm from LA, but I happen yeah. to be in Waltham because let's go, of, let's go, Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Laker Nation, <laughs> Bo- Southern. <right? laughs> happen to be in in Boston, you know, for some customer customer meeting meeting service. Now, I did a happy hour yesterday, yeah. and all of those service now sellers, younger sellers, newer to the game, were all wanting to know more about your story. Right? Yeah. They see you as a young guy in this space who has had some tremendous success. Having had the benefit of interviewing you, I'm going to call this now four times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a couple times. Right? <laughs> now four times. Yeah, they were they found your story really compelling, right? Yeah, I gave them the I told them the story about you're up. Yeah, and how that happened for you, and how that kind of you know changed the course of your life, the life of your family, and your legacy yeah. allowed you to really set up situations where you're even changing the lives of us working here at Glyfast, those customers that we That's serve. The goal. Yeah. So seeing how you're extending that passion you have in so many different directions is really amazing to me. And I wonder, in talking to you now, when you face personal challenges, yeah. how is that empowering you to move through those? <laughs> well... <laughs> Define personal challenges because there's there's a um, there's a wider array of that right like sure I was spectrum. trying to keep it vague <laughs> I know well yeah I mean right now you know I think it's no secret to the to the people in the community is battling battling cancer which is you know by far probably the biggest personal challenge I've went through and this is my second time battling it and beat it the first time but I got to be there for my family I have to be there for uh, my team and you know, whatever God kind of has in store and the plan for me, I'm, I'm okay with that, you know? And, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's a little scary. It sucks, you know, yeah. but, but, um, you just gotta show up. It's the same thing with challenges in business or anything else is like, you gotta show up. You can't run and hide under the covers. You just gotta face it head on. You know, my, my mother always taught me to, to, be brave, have courage, you know, don't, don't, don't be, don't let fear control you. My, it's funny. My daughter <laughs> said, said to my wife, um, something about this, a Taylor Swift line. Mm. And I don't know if you're, you know, Taylor Swift songs, but there's, there's something like about fear. Like it's okay to have fear, but don't just can't let it control you. And it's like my 11, she just turned 11 today is her birthday. She, um, she just, you know, 11 year old kid to be like, to have that emotional intelligence to be like, yeah. you know, 
You can't let fear control you. Yeah. You know, I met Sweet Lorraine, your mother. <laughs> I, I, I met your daughter. <laughs> Happy birthday to her. And, you know, and I even got a chance to interview your mom, which was really special. It helped me to, I felt like, man, I got another level of understanding you, like yeah. getting to that foundation. And she was talking about how when you were a little kid, mm. how you she would go pick you up from school mm. and how all of the other dads of those other children would be like, oh, that, that Mike, that Mike, that Mike. <laughs> <laughs> how they were, everyone was just gravitated to you. Like mm. you had this magnetism about you. And I wonder, do you also know that you have this magnetism that surrounds you now as you go through this particular battle right now? There is so much overwhelming support throughout yeah. the community to me, that yeah. it's just like it's unbelievable. Yeah, supporting it's too much. you it's almost in too this much. challenge. Yeah, it's almost too much because it's like, especially in, in the first few days of it, in the first week, you know, I was in the hospital and I was like, you, you don't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't want, I just want to just shut my phone off. But it's like, it's crazy because so many people just re what can I do? And, you know, everybody stepping up at glide fast. I mean, the ultimate test of glide fast was in 2020 mm -hmm. during COVID. I went out with cancer. I mean, we were still, you know, we we're a lot less mature than we are today. And, you know, not one person quit that whole year. And I know some of it's probably due to COVID. Nobody wanted to really make too many moves, but I mean, people, same thing. They were they were brave. They had the courage. Okay, we're gonna stick with Glide Fast. We're not running running and hiding and running away. Yeah. And it's almost like a given now. Like you know, people are just like, oh, okay, at Glide Fast. All right, all right, Mike, we're with you. Don't worry, you get through this. We we've seen this. We've we've done this before. And you know, we haven't skipped a, you know a beat. And that's that's just you know speaks to the power of Glide Fast and how. You know, it really isn't me, mm. you know? It's not. People think, oh, it's really not me. That's I'm not doing the projects. I'm not the one, you know, fulfilling these customer visions. It's I'm just the one that gets to, like, you know, project that, wow. project the, the good word of Glidefast. Well, I think, I think that, that <clears throat> part of what you bring to us is that you, you set a certain level of, of passion, I mean, because, yeah. you know, obviously, you know, being a CEO, you know, CEO is going to set the standard for excellence, yeah. for delivery. But not <laughs> every CEO is going to come and empower us with passion, yeah. right? And like a true authentic passion where we can like borrow some of that yeah. and then multiply it and use it as a multiplier, actually, right? Yeah. And it's really been rewarding to see how the leaders are like rising right now within yeah. the organization and everybody in, in even in their individual contributor roles, they're rising to the occasion of like, yo, let's do this for Mike, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so even, you know, maybe I'll, I'll share this. Um, we are all saying be like Mike. <laughs> who's, who's saying that? <laughs> all of us. <laughs> really? that, that, yeah, yeah. That's our motive. That, that's our slogan. Be like Mike. Uh, I'm you definitely, know? I'm definitely, I mean, I'm definitely not perfect and you know, but, you know, one thing I think I am is genuine. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to BS you. And, and I think, you know, I just try to be the leader that I wanted when I was a TC, when I was yeah. an architect, when I, you know, like, th that's what I just try to be is like the boss or whatever that I wanted. It sucks working somewhere you, you don't want to be. It sucks not getting acknowledge for the hard work you're doing it sucks not getting you know some sort of recognition or bonus for when you work extremely when you go above and beyond you know it sucks when you look at you know somebody not working as hard as you right next you know so those are things that just bothered me and instead of me you know being the leader that's just like cares about the bottom line or whatever those i i cared about those concepts of making sure people enjoy working here, making sure people are compensated. Yeah. And that, I didn't realize it but at the time, but that brought in all the other success. That, mm. That'll bring in the high, you know, the success and winning deals and, you know, building a great company and the high retention. We're the best retention in the space. This is the most, 
this is this space is is probably the most rec- you know being a service now technical consultant or architect you're probably the mo- one of the most recruited roles in the world sure especially in tech and for us to have their attention 90% of the last 12 months is insane and you know and and I think it speaks to just the people here at Glidefast like people care about each other and you know that's got to start with me when i interviewed you at knowledge 23 i I I interviewed a lot of people, and those interviews went different directions based on who I was talking to. But I always asked everyone the same final question. Yeah, superpower? Yeah. Yes, what is your superpower? Yeah. And we were locked in in that interview. Like, we were like, you surprised me with your answer to what is your superpower. Do you remember what you said? Did I say love? That's what you said. Yeah, okay. And that surprised me. Yeah. But then I was like, that shouldn't have surprised me, right? Yeah, yeah. Because... That, it, that passion that you have that empowers us is rooted in love. Yeah. Can you speak about how your superpower is serving you now in this season of your life? Well, first of all, I mean, I think when you wake up in the morning, you have a dis- – everybody kind of has that decision. Um, do you want to be a good guy or a bad guy? Mm. And maybe it's not every day. You know, for me, it's not every day. Like, I I – I want to be a good guy. Like I've, and it's funny because one of our other interviews, you asked me if I'm like Marvel or, <laughs> and I was like at a loss. Cause I, I'm like not a good comic book follower. Yeah. I'm not, I don't know which one's which. <laughs> and I was rethinking about that, which superhero I like. And I think, I, I think Spider-Man, I think I like Spider-Man. Now tell me why you like Spider-Man. Well, he's like, just like a regular kid one day. And then, he's fighting crime at night, like without his grandparents. No, I don't know. I just, something about Spider-Man. I've always wanted to help people. You know, I've always wanted to help people. You know, my stepfather was a teacher for like 25 years. Ironically passed away of cancer when I was 14, but the people at his wake, the people that, you know, that I knew over the years, his students, like just the amount of people he helped was just like, overwhelming for me so that that that's the legacy i was chasing since i was kind of 14 some some of it passively not not really knowing that's a that's what i wanted to do this experience just like the last time i was going through it has pushed me further to like philanthropy and figuring out okay like how can i help more people people in general like i don't have negativity you know, competitors I like to compete with and stuff. And, you know, I like to play the game, but I'm just, I have love inside. I don't have hate. I don't have negativity. And I think that's a good thing. And that is kind of fueling, like, I need to do more to help more people. Wow. Yeah. Okay. You're going through this, uh, this fight the second time. And <laughs> what you just said to me is that I got to figure out how to help more people. Yeah. No one would push back at all. If you said, listen, I have helped so many people. I've given to so many charity organizations. And like, right now yeah. I'm going to like, no, I feel the opposite. It's weird. I feel like I haven't done enough. Way think- not enough. Way not enough. I've been blessed. I've been blessed. And you got to share those blessings. You know, you have to. You need, you need, this is, this is like my role in society. Like I have to, <laughs> I have to do, I have to do more. It's my responsibility. Mike, tell me about how, <clears throat> how you grew up. You mentioned your stepfather. I met yeah. sweet Lorraine. I've met yeah. your lovely wife and beautiful daughters. Yeah. Um, tell me those early days, yeah. what that was like for you, because I know you ended up in uh, a program called Year Up, which yeah. I know that is a big you know, initiative for you and support, yeah. supporting their work. Amazing you, program. You you are also uh, an <coughs> alumni of that. Yeah. From what I understand, in my cursory research, Year Up is for, like, what they would call, like, at-risk youth. Yeah. Right? Yep. Tell me about what was going on before you found Year Up. <laughs> yeah, I grew up, like, lower middle class, like, basically single mom. I had a great stepfather. My mother's amazing. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like, we didn't have a lot. My mother worked, you know, a job, two job, job and a half. To, to support us. We had, you know, had challenges here and there. We, the heat would shut off, whatever. In Boston. In Boston. Yeah, Everett. Yeah, which is right outside of Boston. I thought it was fun when we had the stove, you know, when we turned on the stove, when the heat would shut off, and, and we'd be sleeping in the kitchen that night. I thought it was, oh, we're camping. You know, I thought. Oh, wow. <laughs> so 
you know, but that wasn't like an everyday thing, but I had some like, you know, ch- school trouble, you know, like I think when my, st- my stepfather passed away like a week, literally a week into my freshman year of high school. So mm-hmm. I was acting out and, um, went to different high schools, tried different high schools and ended up uh, getting my GED. <clears throat> I think I was 16 or 17. And, um, I went into like, uh, I did plumbing for a while, construction and, I did, um, I was like, you know, I was always, I was always a worker. So I was working like multiple jobs, bartending, catering, whatever, uh, waitering, but I was definitely lost. Like I didn't know what I was going to do. I was working construction, you know, with that plumber. It was just like, I didn't want to do that job. Do you think you were looking for something? You said that you were lost and I'm wondering if Uh, you were looking for something. Yeah, I think we all are at that age, right? Like, you know, um, my friends were all going to college you know, soon and graduating. And I, and I was like, you know, working construction with this, with this guy who was a little shady. <laughs> I didn't like him. And, um, and then, yeah, like one of my friends was like, Hey, his program year up has like, you know, it's a computer aspect. They pay you, you get college credits, you got an internship. And I was like, Oh, all right. Yeah. Like what else am I doing? Like, let me just try it. And it's just, I just, yeah. Like I fell in love with it. I was, you know, never late because you know, they teach you professionalism too. You got to go into Boston, you got to dress up nice. And I just fell in love with it. I got a great internship at a hospital and did help desk. And I was in, I, so I was in IT. I was working at a corporate IT job at 19 years old. It gave me a head start, really. It was, it was fortunate. I think about what you said with year up and the part yeah. that I heard was, and they pay you. Yeah. And yeah, stipend. Yeah. They pay you a stipend. <clears throat> And I'm also thinking about GCU. Yeah. Life as Consulting University. Same thing. Did you model GCU? Ah, tell me a little bit more. Yeah. So we purchased a company, Cloud Pires, in 2021, I believe. And they were they were focused on just like we were focused on hiring the best talent, Glidefast at the time. Always from the beginning. And they were focused on hi, how do how do we just train people from scratch? Mm Because they're in they were in Cincinnati, is not like a huge service now pool talent pool there maybe or whatever they kind of took the opposite approach so i i was like i love it this is you know something i always wanted to do i wanted to train more people but we just never kind of made that leap or had the kind of structure to do that and we had to stay profitable we didn't have any money (laughs) you know like the the so once we made that acquisition you know they were doing i think about two students or two TCs a, a, a quarter, we threw gasoline on that. I think we went up to like 15 or 12 or something. And yeah, I wanted to, same thing as year up. I wanted to pay people to come, you know, you're, you're going to get paid to learn. You're going to get paid to build an amazing career. You'd be kind of crazy not to do it. And yeah, it worked out so, so well and so successful and, everybody's itching to when's the next one? When's the next class? When's the next class? Everybody's asking, but you know, there's, I said it in my, at the keynote at knowledge is art and science to this. You know, you have to stay profitable. You have to, there's, there's the fun side of the business. There's the helping people. There's the doing, but you also have to have to have the finances to do that. And that's the, what I call the science of it. Yeah. Why? I also, I think that there's the heart and science of it. <clears throat> That's a good one too. You know, <clears throat> yeah. Because heart, yeah. you're you're putting, you're changing lives. Yeah. Right. In so many levels, people who work here, the customers. Yeah. The people you influence that you don't even know their names. Yeah. The, the heart and science. When I think of, uh, I love that better. Heart and science. Yeah, you got it. Forget <laughs> that. I, I love it. <laughs> so I I really I, I love hearing that, and I listening to you talk. I think it was about a year ago, it could be off there, where you initiated the Path to Architect program. Well, yeah, not my idea. I got to give the credit to the rest of the team, but yeah, yeah. And is the team, your, the company's thought, was that that kind of be like a, an extension where maybe like GCU may like be like elementary school. Yeah, And then you kind of go to like maybe graduate school with path to architect or well, the thoughts there. Exactly. I mean, listen, people want to grow. Yeah. Just, you know, every, just like you have your goals. I have my goal. Every single person 
from, I don't care if you're sweeping the floor, I don't care what your role is, you want to know, hey, is this, is there, I have goals that I want to do personally. Is the company I'm working at going to support me in that? Are there opportunities to grow at this company? So we, we know that's, that's something we have to do. Again, do you have the means to do it? Can you do it? Do you know how to do it? And the path to architect, I think, was that first step that Gladfast took to take, okay, you're not a, you're not a junior anymore. Yeah. You're, you know, a senior TC. You're looking to get to that next level. Okay, here's the education. Here's the, the roadmap on how to become an architect. I haven't seen any other partners making that investment because they're worried about today, today, today. And we're, we're looking at the future. And, and then on top of that, we've now we've rolled out BPC 2.0, we're working to get a TC to senior TC program. Mm. So that'll keep all those things will keep happening. You know, more bonuses. Like I know I'm getting off track a little bit, but we're up to, I think 15 different bonuses a month now that we give out. And I guarantee you next year there'll be 20. You know? I believe that because yeah. when I interviewed you almost a year ago, <laughs> <laughs> there was less. Yeah. There was less. Yeah. I, th- I think there. Yeah. I think it was like eleven yeah. or something. And I, I, I've written I don't them know down the, at the exact time. number. I I, this, I just got the updated. We just rolled out this month. We'll have a new one called the Positivity Award. No, it's called. Oh, it's got a cool name. Uh, Josh is over there. Josh, shout out Josh. He came up with the idea shout of just Josh. just giving an award for someone for somebody who's like, and oh, the optimist. It's the uh, ah. optimist of the month award. You know, just somebody who's just being positive, that's dealing with a tough customer, that's, that's you know, dealing with maybe something at home or, yeah. you know, just being positive. I mean, the power of positivity is just like, you know, you see somebody that's like got their head down and negative, uh, and then you see somebody that's just positive, that looks at every situation as the positive angle, th- their life is just going to be better. Sure. And they're sure. going to have better outcome. The path to architect, I want to yeah. kind of get a little bit more because, and the reason why people ask me about it all the time, and I mm. have some cursory understanding of it. Yeah. Someone asked me the other day, like, well, what does that, in, they want to know more of the specifics, yeah. someone outside the organization. Yeah. What does the specifics look like, or what can you share about that <clears throat> in terms of the internal support? Are those folks going to the CTA program through ServiceNow? No, no, no. Or, it's our own. It's our own program. It's our own program. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we built, yeah. It's, yeah, sh- yeah. I, I wish I could give credit to, to, to the people who built it. It's slipping my mind right now. But uh, I know there's a lot of people who helped out, sure. a lot of architects that, that, that jumped in there. But, yeah, it's our own program. It's a shadowing thing. It's an education, you know. Um, it's it's not a super long program, but it's 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 similar to the to ServiceNows where they have – you know, a set of things that they want you to do, the lessons to teach you. I think the ServiceNow program is a little bit more about presentation yeah. and just polishing. Ours is ours is a little bit more hard skills, I think, too, mm. um, because the hard skills are, are just as important as the, as the soft skills. Sure. Okay, let's, let's shift gears a little bit. Yeah. I spoke to you in January of 2024 having a conversation with you about what are your predictions for 2024, the year ahead? We're How now, scary was that? Right. We're now at the end of Q1. One. Yeah. The next week we kick off Q2. Curious about your thoughts, predictions about what Q2 may hold for the yeah. ecosystem. Well, I was saying it's scary because we were spot on on some of the things yep. we said. You, talk yeah. about it with the, part, yeah, the partner I mean, ecosystem in particular. We, we And I didn't have inside knowledge on much, but you know, there were, there were like two major acquisitions like within a week of, yeah. of our, of our uh, conversation. And, 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 and we called that, uh, that there would be more this, this quarter and this year, you know, there's a lot of tor- turmoil at different partners, CEOs changing over, leaving, retiring, being retired. Um, so, you know, I think we're we're going to start to see some fallout from the acquisitions. You're going to start to see, you know, just acquisitions are tough. We're very fortunate. Our acquisition went extremely well, still going extremely well. But some of these larger companies that, you know, these really super massive companies, 
you know, aren't, don't have as, aren't going to have as much focus and caution around the, the, the employees and the customers. So you're going to see some friction. You're going to see a lot of customers unhappy making moves. You're going to see a, a lot of employees, a lot sure. of consultants unhappy making moves. But uh, I think we'll still see some more consolidation. Um, we'll probably see some, you know, two, two or three elite partners getting gobbled up. Um, you'll probably see a couple new partners popping up from people from other acquisitions, you know, starting things up. And every time there's a, there's a hiccup in the economy, ServiceNow does better. Customers need to ad- adapt and adopt more digital workflows to pick up the slack for maybe layoffs that they have at, at organizations. So, and then when the economy does good and they're hiring a bunch of people, they need technology to to help pick up the slack there too, right? So, you know, ServiceNow is just so well positioned. You know, you look at every other massive technology company in Silicon Valley that had layoffs, ServiceNow didn't. It's interesting. It's 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 going to be interesting to see how Q2 works out because, um, you know, Q1 for Glyfast was great. Um, and I'm, I'm really interested to see some customers, you know, further invest in service now in Q2. So what I documented you say was that your prediction for Q2 is about two to three elite partners going through some type of acquisition. This year. I don't know. If this year. Yeah. Okay. This yeah. year. Yep. Yeah. And we will revisit this. Yeah. You know, a Q4 for yeah. sure. And you also talked about, and I think that this is going to, is natural too. New, you believe that you will see new partners popping up in the service now ecosystem Something you also said was that on the customer side, customers will continue to evolve throughout this economy. This is a election year. We have some significant market catalysts with that being said. Yeah. And that customers are going to need technology to pick up the slack. And this is where ServiceNow is well positioned with offering customer workflows and workflows generally speaking. Yeah. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing how, you know, your, your predictions, you yeah. know, w- will fare in the, in the year ahead. I think these are, are really spot on and, and looking forward to it. Let's let's talk about in Q2, we also have the premier event for service now, yeah, knowledge, knowledge 24. Oof. Knowledge 24. Comes quick every it year. Comes quicker quick, quick quicker every year, yeah. It comes quick. Yeah. What for those who have not had the experience of knowledge, what can people expect to witness? Well, you got Pitbull this year. So that's that's uh that's new. What, did they, what did, do you know what they had last year? They, it was somebody big. Uh, Red Hot, not Red Hot. Chili. I don't. I well, forgot who they had. Fergie, or whatever. Was Fergie there? I think they were in Sco, the Black P- IPs. Either way, I mean yeah, they were at Sco. Yeah, yeah, they were yeah, at Sco. yeah. So yeah. I mean, you're gonna have. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, there's there's always the fun aspect. There's gonna be great, great dinners. You know, happy hours, yeah. parties. You got the Glide Fest party on Wednesday night. You got the Service Now Pitbull party on, mm-hmm. on Thursday. Um, a lot, lots of learning, lots around Gen AI. Everyone's going to be jumping in those Gen AI sessions. I, I'd love to see. We should actually quantify what percentage of the sessions are around involve AI. Because I guarantee. Let's do that. Let's yeah. think. Let's make a prediction. Maybe. 25%. About 20, 25% of the sessions 20, are going to be around generative AI. I think so. 20, okay. Maybe 20%. It, it's just a, it's just a great, it's Vegas. You know, you get the Vegas, like, just just energy, you know. But Let me, let me ask yeah, you this. Yeah. Since we talked a bit about people who are leveling up in their career. Yeah. It was October of 2022, I believe, when ServiceNow CEO predicted or said, like, this my initiative is rise up. We want to scope a million people yeah. on the ServiceNow platform by the end of 2024. So there's going to be a lot of people, a lot of different personas at Knowledge24. Imagine what would you do if you were a person attending Knowledge who was just breaking into the ecosystem, maybe looking to land that first role? How yeah. would you be navigating those waters? It's hard because, like, even, you know, everything we just talked about, mm-hmm. You know, I just said how much I want to help people. You know, I wish I could hire everybody. Yeah. And just, you know, that, you know, and just teach them more Glidefast University. You know, it's hard for, for partners because well, there's two different aspects of the market if you're, you're somebody who wants to get in the service now 
consulting space or, you know, become an, an admin or whatever, there's two sides of it. There's the partner world, which we live in, yeah. and the customer world. And, you know, it's hard for a partner because, you know, a partner like LifeHouse, like whatever, and the other of our competitors, we're under pressure to deliver high quality results and we're getting paid a lot of money to do that. And it requires a lot of expertise. Yep. So it, it, it's a very delicate balance of how you take somebody that has very little experience or expertise and then justify that selling it to a customer and also, you know, being successful, you know, helping them be successful. Um, which is why we created Glyfast University because sure. we can control it. It's a three month program. There's shadowing, there's mock implementations and we can't do that unlimited, you know, cause then I have to take those people and we have to make sure that they're adding value for customers and we're getting them utilized and all that. And a lot of partners don't even have that. Right. So a lot of other partners are like, listen, we, we're just trying to keep the lights on. We can't you know, bring in a junior person. So, and then you have customers that are, they need that expertise, right? That's why they're hiring GlideFast. That's why they're hiring an admin, an admin or an architect internally because they don't know either. So right. they don't want to hire somebody that just doesn't, that knows just as much as them because that doesn't get them anywhere. So you're in a very difficult situation if, you, if you're new coming into the space. Someone like you, you created a differentiator, differentiation, right? You, you created a brand, you went out, you, you took a risk, you put yourself yeah. out there, you started showing passion, you started showing uh, something completely different other than just somebody reaching out saying, Hey, I want to do service now, sure. you know? So, so I'd say number one is figure out a way to differentiate yourself. Yeah. Thanks to Bill McDermott, there's a million people trying to work at Glidefast, trying to work at a customer or whatever. Yeah. So you really got to differentiate yourself. The other thing that's tough, and, and I, you know, because I'm thinking if I if I was just starting out trying to get my foot in the door, you know the the other thing the other thing one way you maybe the one way you can differentiate yourself, and I think and no one's gonna like this. I mean, imagine going to a customer or a partner and saying, "Listen, I'll work for free. Mm. I'll work for free." When's the last? I've ne never, never, never as glad fast nine years, no one has ever offered that. That listen, I'll, I'll intern, I'll do whatever. I want this so freaking bad. I'll intern. I'll work for free. I want. I want to just be part of glad fast. I want to just be part of the service now system. That, you know, because that, everybody. That's it, it, there's a line right there. That's why everyone. You know, they want that hundred grand that Bill's yeah. promising them, right? Sure. There's got to be a ton of investment from you. Maybe you can't work for free. You got a family. I understand that. That's the whole. Pur that's the whole purpose why Europe was formed. Sure. To pay you because people have kids and everything, <clears throat> and that's why Glyfast University was born. But it takes so much. Forget about you know offering to work for. Forget about the financials aspect. You got to learn this stuff. It took me. I, I can't tell you how many twenty four hour days. You know, I'd work every all day trying to learn service now, go home at night, try to learn service now for months, yeah. years. I mean, years, right? And you're not alone with that. I was just speaking to Doug, yeah. a, one of our SecOps architect, yeah. and he was say, echoing exactly what you're saying it's now. Nice. Like, it was never like, ends. it does not stop. It never ends. And he's it, an architect. Yeah. And, and service now, thank you very much, R&D at service now. They keep rolling out new stuff, <laughs> right? Like new products, the products get deeper and the products get wider. Yeah. So you're never going to be an expert. You got to stay on your toes. There's two new releases every year. You got to make sure you're really built for this and you really want this. Right. Because this is not an easy thing, <clears throat> which is why there's such a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, if you can make it. So I know I'm on a tangent here, but definitely. Well, I want to hear this. Yeah. You got to differentiate yourself. You got to be willing to work. I have like flashbacks of like me in the attic, like trying to at like midnight trying to figure out what the hell this business rule means or you know script include. <laughs> <laughs> those are not you know those are those are it's tough. I wasn't a developer, so I had to like learn everything. Well, I think that you gave some really solid insight yeah. here, and it's 
it's difficult to hear. You know, you got to yeah, be a yeah. differentiator. You yeah. know, you just can't do the vanilla yeah. resume, do the, the, the courses as they're prescribed. You've got to figure out how you're going to kind of differentiate yourself from yeah. the rest of the pack. And, I, mean, and yeah. I think about, you know, come into the ecosystem myself, and I remember saying, doggone it, Bill, you're putting a million people out here. How am I going to get ahead of that pack? Exactly. That, that was really, like, top of mind. How am I going to do that? Because it's like off to the races. We're competing right now when you say a million people. He's, he's, a, he's a marketing genius. I think a lot of people got excited, like, oh, I can go make 100K. Yeah. In reality, you know, you're not going to just walk in and get a job offer if you have no experience, you know? Well, let, let, me, let me share something yeah. with you. Yeah. I know, I know, yeah, I know a couple I, people I know, that I that happened to. Exactly. You know? But they did something to differentiate. I guarantee you they did. Well, well they I'll, bought their own pass. There we go. Yeah. That's it. Because yeah. to be really honest with you, I, I kind of, I set this, the question up initially yeah. where I said there will be new people there. But what I should also include is that there are not very many new people there. Yeah. So when you are a new person and you're at knowledge, you are one of a few. Because they're not, because other people are not willing to go that extra, yes. st- extra step. It's the same thing with people like. Um, I'm interviewing someone or whatever, and they I've said this a few times, so sorry if you hear it. But it's like people are like, Oh, I don't have the cert. I'll be like, Hey, do you have do you have your implementation cert? Uh, you know, and any of the products or you know, oh, you know, my old my company wouldn't pay for it or I let it expire. And the 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 people out the the crowd out there will come at me and say that with the pitchfork saying certifications are not everything it's experience yes i understand that and i and i'm not saying certifications is everything but not having a certification in the field that we're we're all working to be in shows laziness or Mm. oversight or that you don't care or whatever you have to explain why you don't have it if you had the cert you don't have to explain it right and it shows that you're committed right it shows lack of commitment to me if you don't if you let your certs expire, you know, if you're a doctor, if you're a surgeon and there is there is a cert you have to get every two years and you and you go in your interviewing at a hospital like, oh, yeah, sorry, I don't have my surgeon cert, but I've I got 20 years experience. I mean, isn't that good enough? I've been doing it, you know, but you don't have your cert like this. You're a surgeon and there's a surgeon certification like it's a no brainer. You know, and so that's what I think the the commitment you can see with, with different people in different aspects and different jobs. I think about what you said in your time at Year Up because yeah. you talked about you you were talking about what that kind of day looked like, what that opportunity was like for you. And part of what you said was, Yeah, we had to like show up on time and then you said as an aside, you know, because they were teaching us professional skills as well. Yeah. Now that aside yeah. is a big thing. Huge. It's it's that especially for different people. Speak on it. Well, some people just don't have the soft skills. You know, some people, especially in an urban youth setting, we grew up rough around the edges. We you know we don't necessarily know how to talk in the workplace. Yeah. You know, swear I, I'm not a good. Uh, I swear a lot, so I'm not a good. Uh, I didn't learn that guess on that much. But you know, le- like like you know, dress the way you dress. Like, you can't say that here. You can't dress like that here. You can't, you got to be on time. Like, some of the core things about just being a good employee is not taught, just like in in school. Like, you're not taught how to do taxes. Someone's going to yeah. teach you to do that or you're never going to learn. And uh, that's something that Europe knew right off the bat is, like, not only do we have to teach the technical skills, or the finance skills for the finance track, but we also have to teach the soft skills of professionals. You know, you saying that reminds me of, of my, my brother. He recently retired. He's a retired foreman, and he does this thing with his children. He has young adult children, yeah. and he'll take out his young adult children and their friends to, like, happy hour or something once a month or periodically, and he will completely pay for it. Mm. The only thing is you have to be on time. Yeah. If you are not on time, yeah. then you're paying for it. Yeah. And he's there's been times where some of the friends will call from the parking lot. He's like, no, you're no. not here. Yeah. You're late. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he holds the line on yeah, that, that's right? that's smart. And he talks to my children about these small things that make a big difference. And big the main time. thing, and my parents drilled it into us, so that's why he's got it naturally about you got to be on time. Yeah. Like make yourself undeniable by 
doing the small things. I don't right? care. No excuse. I show. I've show when I show up to meetings. It's thirty minutes, forty five minutes, mm-hmm. an hour early. I'll just be sitting in the parking lot, and because you know why? Because for me, I have the worst luck. There's going to be a mm-hmm. meteor that comes out of space and hits the the street right in front of me, and I'm stuck. And you know the the worst thing, even if it's like the most legitimate excuse, like when you walk in front of a customer or a, your boss or whatever, and you're like, oh, I ran out of gas. The dog ate my homework. doesn't matter if it's true. It's still like, be better. You know, yeah, like sure. it's no excuse. Like it's, you know, you're, especially if you're trying to sell somebody something. Yeah. Like there's nothing more disrespectful, I think, than, well, there's plenty more disrespectful, but that's definitely a huge, I think, of sign of disrespect by not being on time. Yeah, and it's something that you can easily control more. Like, like yeah. control the things go, that you can control. Go an hour early. Yeah. What, 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 if you have to be there at noon, I never understood. I worked with a lot of people. I never understood why people would just time it to be there at noon. Mm. Like, just be there at 11. Right, right. Like, tr- And then if you're there at 11.15, it's fine. I'm glad that we're drilling down on this because... I think a lot of times people like want to skip over the soft skills because there's exactly. an assumption that it's they have easy. this. Yeah, yeah. it's or, easy. Or, yeah. The assumption or it doesn't they have matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But if if you're arrogant, I don't want you here. Right. If you're if you're not going to support your team, I don't want. I don't care how smart you are. Uh, if you're not going to support the person next to you, if you if you're going to be disrespectful, arrogant, <laughs> no way. That's the quickest way to get out of glide fast or or not get here. I got a chance to go to the Glyfast office in New York last year. Last last week. Service what am I talking now. about? Service yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, I got a chance to go to the not yet. <laughs> not yet. We'll take it's a nice not a bad office, huh? Oh, oh man. Beautiful it's, what office. What a feeling. What a feeling you get when you walk in that office. Like crazy. <laughs> Listen, I got emotional. Yeah, it's emotional. It's emotional because it's the office, it's the view, it's the people, it's the energy within the city. Crazy. It it it's just the whole environment. It ma- it really made me emotional because I was like, oh, I got to step my game all the yeah, way up. Yeah. You know, like being here, it makes you be like, okay, let me let me reorganize myself yeah. and, and show up better. How can yeah. I be better? Where are the areas where I can be better? I love your outfit, by the way. Thank I didn't you. compliment you. Look <laughs> phenomenal. Very professional. Thank you. Thank I, you. I didn't compliment you. I mean, yeah. listen, I'm here at the yeah. Waltham glide fast office i i got to show up right yeah. i can't come yeah. in here like a slouch <laughs> <laughs> so when i was when i was in new york i got a chance to meet one of our glide fast architects ryan yeah. gillespie yeah he's the man and you talked and you talked about having architects that show up and support their team about two weeks prior to that i hopped into what we do internally called the share share, share the, the wealth, wealth. Yep. and it was his team that was on that call. And it was so cool because we got a chance to see the, the team that he works with and uh, how each of them add like an, a very important piece to the puzzle of how we deliver for our customers. I we just wanted to share that because when you talk about architects really showing up yeah. for their team, yeah. Brian Gillespie is one of them. The way that they talked about his support of them, yeah. even getting him a cape because of oh, how, I know, I know. <laughs> because of how he is shows up, showed up and, and saved the day. Yeah, that that's a real thing here. Yeah, and he doesn't just show up for Glidefat; like he shows up for the community. You saw like yeah. him posting the pictures, like this is my guy right here. Yeah. You know, yeah. like you guys need to. If you don't know him, you need to and yeah. her and stuff. So like he doesn't just you know he's one of them. He he embodies like you know I knew of him, knew him like before. Gladfast well before and I knew I always wanted him at Gladfast because he's like the you know he he's just so passionate yeah and colorful and I'm like this is he is Gladfast you know yes, he is. so like he I think he knew he was coming here one day anyways like I, I we both knew it when he showed up yeah. to the Gladfast yeah. service now uh knowledge 20 20- 23 after party with a cape on i was like we're gonna be friends forever yeah he's he's crazy (laughs) but he's he's like just all in like that's all in that's that's like you know it's it's a special thing about glide fast like it's you're you know you're 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 either in or you're you're not like you know like it's if we're in we're in all the way that's That's what i 
That's what I've always lived by. If I'm yeah. doing it, I'm doing it a thousand percent. Listen, I have, I have a final question for you. Okay. You were talking earlier about your time with <clears throat> Europe. Yeah. And you were saying, you know, I, I was lost. And I asked you, well, do, do you think you were looking for something? You're like, yeah, yeah, I think I was looking for something, and I finally found that thing. Yeah. In this season in your life, what are you looking for now? Well, recovery, for one. Uh, I got to beat this freaking thing. And then, yeah, like like I said, I got I to gotta figure out how I can just make a bigger impact out there. Um, you know, it's funny because I, I forget – at one point you're bringing something up and I thought you were going to go a direction of like, why, why are you still, how are you still motivated? Because, you know, there's been a lot of success here and, you know, my, the partner, my co-founders are, they're, you know, retired or whatever they're doing. And I'm still here. I'm like, even through the battle that I'm facing, I'm on the computer more than I was before. You know, it's like, I, I'm just like, I don't know what it is. I just like, it, oh, this is what I was thinking, the sports thing. I don't know what it is that, why I'm so competitive in this. Why I have to hit our goals, grow the company, make sure people like Ryan are loving it here, making sure you're growing, making sure, you, you know, I just love it. Like, that's my number one thing. I don't like, I like snowmobiling. I like snowboarding. I like hiking. I like, you know, I love spending time with my family. Obviously that's got to come first, but this thing that we do, I just cannot like accept not going all in. Like I can't 75% it. Like it's killing me right now that I'm not on a plane to close a deal. I love it. And I, and one of the reasons, this, this is why I was thinking about it, because you're talking about aiming for the stars, aiming for the moon. <clears throat> Since day one, there has never been a ceiling here. There's never been a goal. The goal has been to grow. The, grow. the goal has been to deliver great outcomes for our customers. The goal has been to make sure people love working here. But there's never been a number or an end, a finish line. That's what I was thinking mm. about. There's never been a finish line. So when you say that runner said, or that track star said, looking beyond the finish line, for me, it was beyond the ceiling, you know? Because it's like, we hit 10, we just hit 5 million. We, we just hit 5 million in, in revenue. Holy, holy millions. Like, what? Millions? You know, to me, that was such a r ridiculous <laughs> word. In, uh, in, you know, millions. I'm not going to, you know, I never really... But it is like, we had 50 million. All right, now we're at 75. Now we're at 100. Now we're at... So there's never been like, okay, we're done. And I think that's what that track star meant in their world is finish line. For me, I always think of sailing. And I always think of like, there's no sailing. I haven't seen it yet. Okay. You, you're now talking <clears throat> about, we're now getting deeper into mindset. <clears throat> and I think that is a differentiator for you mm. is that infinite mindset. Yeah, in, infinite game is something. That's I forget what that is, but okay. somebody somebody wrote that when you said infinite. Somebody has a theory, infinite game theory. I think that's oh, really? what, I think that's what it is. It's like just infinite, and that's really what it is. It's just like it's it, it's infinite for for me. You know. Well, you know, you say. Listen, let's get that million, let's get that 10 million, yeah. that 25, that 75. Man, we at 200. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's not about money either. So, but I, that's one thing actually I want to make sure. Okay. Because it's not about like stuff in my pockets and like that's just how to measure the success. Mm. That's like the championships for, for Kobe. Yeah. Right? It's just a, it's a measuring stick. That's right. how you measure it. Did we win the championship? Yes or no? <laughs> you know, did we hit, our, did we hit our targets? Yes or no? Did right. we, you know, and, and, you know, sometimes you make it to the playoffs and you, and you don't make it to the championship or, you know, you lose to the heat and somehow in round one, <laughs> <laughs> you 
you know, or whatever it was. From Listen, the, uh, <laughs> everybody stumbles from time to time. But but that's still, you know, still a great season. You yeah. know, you still set these records. You still, you know, and it's like, we'll get them next year. You yeah. know, and, and that's so. So I know I'm throwing out a lot of numbers with money and I didn't mean to interrupt you, but it's important for everyone to understand that the numbers are just a measure that you still have to measure profitability, all that. Mm-hmm. But for, for, for me personally, my personal financial wealth is not, it's important to me. I want to make sure my kids are good. And there was a time I, I needed to like make sure I could pay my mortgage, right. you know, which I skipped that a couple of times when starting glad fast. I don't know. It's hard to explain. It's just, it's just the win. It's the win that matters. It's the, it's the like, you know, seeing one of my sales reps close a $10 million deal. Like, you know, it's the, it's the, yeah, we just beat this other company on this deal. Like it's just, yeah, Bill McDermott just sent me a text like that. Like those things motivate me way more. It's like cars, love cars, right? I have, have a a couple nice cars. Mm -hmm. They just get you from point A to point B. And, you know, when I'm like, when I first get a car or when I first start getting nice cars, it's like, oh my God, it's unbelievable. But eventually that fades. And the most fun, like the best times I have don't require money. You know, like the best times I have are like with friends, working, closing a deal with my family, like going out and spending money is like... you know, once you get past a certain point, it just doesn't matter. I'm glad we landed here and that we yeah. had the, the, the yeah. privilege, the benefit to hear your thought process behind yeah. that because, and I hope we keep a lot of this in yeah. because when I talk to people who don't yeah, have you, direct you, you connection, think, they ask me money. about that about yeah, you. Yeah, they think it's money. I know. Yeah, they, they ask that about you. Of course. You, just as recently as yesterday, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so it's good to hear to get that perspective and we got it documented so we could feed it out to the world. Yeah. Like, well, this is what he said and this is how he feels about yeah. that. This is his perspective. This is how he's growing, um, you know, differently right now in this phase. I want to make sure that we don't leave anything on the table. Let's talk a little bit about generative AI. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Generative AI. Yeah. We talked about differentiators. I'm going to talk about generative AI as a disruptor. Mm-hmm. Service now's, um, Chief Innovation Officer, Dave, Dave Wright. Wright, yep. He talked about how generative AI, I'm paraphrasing, is basically a novelty in 2023. However, the year 2024, generative AI needs to be put to work, and that's sort of like a ServiceNow slogan, put generative AI yep. to work. Yep. What are your thoughts about uh, GlideFast bringing a generative AI product to market? Where do you see that? It's right now, I kind yeah. of see generative AI. Like, I used to have aquariums growing up, right? We go to the, the, the pet store. You buy a new fish. Mm-hmm. They put it into a plastic bag with some water. Yeah. You put that plastic bag b- on top. Of, yes, yeah. you put it on top of the aquarium. Let that, that fish acclimate, right? Yeah. So I kind of feel generative AI is sort of that new fish that's yeah. coming into the aquarium. It's a good analogy. <laughs> Talk to me a little yeah. bit about how you're introducing generative AI here within how GlideFast delivers for customers. Yeah. I mean, like the first thing we did is like, how can we leverage it to better our business? Just like kind of, I think everyone's trying to do and not, not necessarily with service now, but you know, we, we came out with um, our first product and then quickly two behind that. And I'll just talk maybe about one or two of them, but agile genius, I'm sure pretty much everybody's heard about that. It cuts down on clerical work. It fills in blanks. It saves 25% of the um, requirements gathering phase of, an, of a ServiceNow implementation. So that is direct uh, benefit we pass back to our customers. I mean, everybody's, Gen AI, everyone's looking for more efficiency. How can we save time? How can we get more done with less? Like, that's the, that's the key, right? Does that save customers money when it's cutting down 25%? Of course. Of mm-hmm. course. And it, and it allows us and the customer to refocus on more important things other than grammar, po- you know, populating raw notes into story forms. It it allows us to review stories rather and edit and modify rather than having to start from scratch. Yeah. Test cases and epics and themes and, you, you know, it, it's, it yeah. continues to go from there. And then the other 
product we had, which I loved, was um, was just leveling up. It was basically taking all this data from a raw um, ServiceNow user profile and actually creating a con- uh, ServiceNow consultant profile in PDF form that is basically we can pass off to customers of ServiceNow to say, here's Kali, here's her experience, here's our certifications. And that was just such a gruesome process for us manually to have to, you know, go through each Word document every three months and update it. And that was literally somebody's full-time job that they didn't want probably, right? And we were able to leverage Gen AI to now it's, a re- again, a review process rather than a start from scratch. You know, those two examples are great examples of how Gen AI will be used in the workplace and in service now, just different flavors, right? Sure. It's all going to save time. It's all going to in- increase the, the user experience. It's all going to uh, save money, you know, or, or repurpose, um, you know, boring jobs. Just like service, this was the service now promise from the beginning. We're going to allow you to focus on more important aspects of your job. Right. And that's just, this is just the next generation. So it's delivering on that promise. It, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so you you talked about, and this is where people, the people who are kind of pushing back about the introduction of generative AI in the in in, in business, right? And generally, it's just overall, the pushback is, well, this is taking away jobs. You mentioned that we had someone that is working exclusively, maybe not exclusively, maybe part of their role was yeah. like put getting these these yep. consultant uh, profiles together. Is that person's role now eliminated? Oh no, they yeah no, they just do another stuff do. More important things. So more impactful work yeah. for the company. Oh, yeah. But no longer yeah. doing that kind of a tedious administrative function. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And that's, and that's you know, that's typically because there's 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 always something to do. Yeah. Yes. There's <laughs> always, I mean, there's, oh, I, when somebody says there's nothing, you know, you hear it all the time. Don't tell me you have nothing to do. There's always something to do. Even when you're. Working in a restaurant, go pick up the broom and sweep the you know floor. Go wipe the counters. You got counters. time to there's, lean. You got time to clean. That's right, exactly. <laughs> and so you know, there's always room for more. And I think that's like the early days of service. Now, like I think back when I was a customer, the the you know boots on the ground people were always you know hesitant, or some people were you know the negative people. Yeah. You know, oh, this is gonna take our job. This is gonna do this. It's like, no, it's not. It's going to allow you to be more efficient, you know, it's going to, you know, it's going to remove some of the chaos and the unknowns, but some people like that chaos and the unknowns because they, they want to just hide under the sheets, get their paycheck, go home, you know, at five o'clock every day. So that that's the biggest challenge for service now is the detract, the detractors, the, the negative people out there that, that don't want it because it's going to, they don't want to improve. That's the reality. There's some people out there just don't don't want, don't that you know whether subconsciously or whatever for whatever reason, self preservation, they don't want to improve. Well, you know, and perhaps that thought of a self preservation is perhaps a bit of an illusion, right? Yeah. Oh, it is an illusion, hundred percent. Speaking about service, the promise of service now. Yep. What are your thoughts about service now delivering on the promise of it being a no to low code? platform i mean it, it is today it is it is i mean it, you can't get much more listen if you want a ferrari you're gonna need high octane gas to put in that thing when you do an oil change it's gonna cost you five grand when you you know there's there is a cost to high efficiency there is a cost to high automation and that is expertise you know, you, you can't have, uh, uh, think of a better example. You know, you don't, like, like, like the key to start a Ferrari is not a kid's toy mm-hmm. key chain, right? It's a freaking Ferrari key. Yeah. You know, and so with great, you know, I always say with great power comes great responsibility, right? And, and you got to make the investment to do that. So, so it's never going to be just, just press the start button, you know, you just not, it's just not going to happen. It needs to be personalized. It needs to be developed. It needs to be built. Best practice needs to be followed. Great architecture models need to be created. And it's just no hiding from that. It's just, 
but 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 the good news is it's worth it. <laughs> it's <laughs> the 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 juice is worth the squeeze. The juice is worth the squeeze. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Kali, thank you for joining me on another episode of Glide Chat. I hope we got the camera working here. Welcome to Boston. So happy, so happy to have you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Do you have a topic in mind that you'd like to discuss? Reach out to us at GlideFast.com and subscribe to our podcast for new episodes. Thanks for listening.